Good morning. Greetings. We will give everybody a few more minutes to be able to come on in. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Let's wait another minute or two, Amy. Okay. I don't think we're going to get that many people today, but that's fine. Yes. That That's great. If we don't get that many people today, it means there is vacation happening in open source. <laughs> Yeah, 14. I think this is who we're getting. So might as well. That just works for me. All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It is December 19th and you are here at the TOC meeting, which means you have made it. Next slide. As always, if you are here, you're complying with the LF antitrust policy notice and you're familiar with the meeting logistics. Okay, let's go next slide. We've got a bunch of TOC members present today. Um, and ultimately, this is a working session. So folks on the call, if you have questions for the TOC, we do have elections coming up. Um, feel free to ask them, but largely it's going to be TOC working through our queue of things that we need to get done or understanding where things are currently sitting um, for our projects. So I guess we can start with anybody that's got questions. Ali. Yeah. Hello. Um, so I have a question about asking questions, which means um, I checked the document and I wanted to add something like a question and in advance, but it requires edit access. Edit access. So uh, um, I didn't know how to do that. But my question is basically um, the projects applying to move levels um, task force. Any updates on that one or what's the road ahead? So I have to. Um, so there is, um, is George on the call? Yes. I am. Yes. So George, why don't you give us an update real quick on where things are at? Yeah, I actually submitted a, a pull request of the, uh, so we started off with one document and then instead we split into three documents, one for uh, sandbox, one for incubation, and then one for um, graduation based on the criteria that we had found. It was the document that you had. I just reformatted it. And yep. then I PR'd that uh, before I went on my trip two weeks ago to the talk directory. And so that's the first half. The second half is going to be what you want the issue template to look like when a project like applies to do the thing. Um, but I hadn't gotten around to that yet. And as I was stubbing that out, I realize that there's going to be discussion that needs to happen there be, uh, on what people are going to want the form to look like. Um, 
So I hadn't gotten around to that yet. And I kind of focused on the things that were already kind of finished and PR'd. Let me get you the pull request here. Was it 1216? Because that one is still listed in draft. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I'd like feedback on that. Or if you want, I could take the draft off. It's up to you. <laughs> um, uh, uh, that's where we are at tactically, uh, strategically. I'm hoping someone. So there's the documentation that uh, is currently in draft being generated to support the recommendations from the task force. Um, the next steps beyond that are the TOC needs to make a decision to accept the recommendations as they exist or accept them with modifications. Um, one way that we can go about doing that is through the templates that are being uh, suggested as PRs on the repo. Um, this is actually one of the topic areas that the TOC is going to be exploring um, in February so that we can make a decision and start moving forward with this. So there is generating the guides, the documentation, the instructional material to assist anybody that's moving levels with what the work is that needs to happen. Part of that is making sure templates are available for use, but also writing the guides to go along with it, both for maintainers and for the TOC um, and for the tags as well. And then the next step beyond that is the actual acceptance or, or ratification of those recommendations and merging them into the repo. From there, um, beyond that, it'll be determining um, if there are existing projects that have applied to move levels that we would like to trial the new criteria against, or at least the new process against, um, deciding on a cutoff date to transition to that new process based off of the evaluation and feedback from any trials that happen if the TOC chooses to go down that. So we do still have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, ideally, we would have this done by May at the latest is having everything done, merged and complete with a path forward. Um, but again, this is largely gonna be a much longer conversation with the TOC on where we're going next. Did that answer your question, Ali? Yeah, it did. I was gonna ask about the um, applications in progress, but you already answered. So uh, yeah, you're preparing for a graduation application for Knative. Um, that's the root cause. Thank you. Mm -hmm. George? Yeah, just, just to get the simple explanation here to, to kind of explain the workflow, the way it would work is you would file an issue, like your project would file an issue using that template and it would say, we are applying to move whatever. And then that, that issue would remain open. Then you would open a PR into the proposals repo using one of these templates and you would fill out that and that would be your PR. And then the places in that template where it says talk fills out that's where the back and forth between your project and the talk and stuff would happen. And then once that PR is merged, the issue would be closed and then you would open the new issue for your next level. So we would say like your project would have an issue open for whatever its next level is going to be. Yeah, pretty, pretty incredible. So I hope that kind of understands where we're coming from. But that's what it's looking like so far. We can always change it. Sounds good to, good to me. Thank you. Awesome. And that's all I have. Cool. Um, other questions? I mean, there was a question in chat also to George oh. about how was the uh, the conference that um, the AI dev conference just happened. So it was like Ricardo, I think, has more, as we'll probably have more information, but I was. Um, the amount of stuff that's already in production, like the the talk with Tim Hawking at at KubeCon, where it, it kind of felt where it was like, hey, we better get moving, otherwise, you know, we're we we need to get the stuff ready so people can build stuff on top. There's so much stuff already in production and so much work happening that it's very. Um, I found it very uh, motivational to un to understand that end user companies are really like running with the ball. Uh, Joseph Sandoval walked me through their whole setup at Adobe, and I was just like, uh, the the amount of progress they made in the past eighteen months. It was just awesome. Ricardo, you have anything you want to add there? Yeah, I think a lot of conversations around LLMs, um, how folks are running LLMs in production, um, you know, different applications of LLMs. 
so we had a booth like a CNCF had a booth and uh, I think uh, one of the interesting things is you know how you can uh, bridge uh, data scientists and infrastructure people you know together right so uh, I think there's a gap there so I think a lot of infrastructure people are wanting to learn what machine learning is and what goes behind the scenes and you know how how these things work how the models are, machine learning models are created or LLMs are created uh, what the scale problems are uh, and then you have data scientists trying to learn you know what kubernetes is and what cloud native is so i think one of the things that we want to do is with this working group too is continue to bridge this and so we can work together and advance both fields together Does that make sense too? Awesome. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, George. That was great information sharing about AI.dev. I know a lot of folks couldn't make it, so thank you. Okay. Yeah, happy happy to chat more. Uh, if you ever want to chat one-on-one, -on -one, happy to talk about it. I'm excited about this. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening. So then We'll see a lot of changes too, and you know how how people work, and we, because they're using generative AI to to do things faster, right? So how maybe you can apply generative AI to cloud native, for example, you know, for security purposes to see security gaps and in, in your infrastructure or your Kubernetes environments, uh, how to um, use that to maybe uh, see other gaps right? like. Like you, you can optimize for workloads, or you can actually yeah, I, I help with the uh, carbon neutral uh, or net zero goals. Right? A lot of people are talking about sustainability too. So. Interesting. Very cool. Um, so if we want to move on, there's some kind of questions in Slack that I, I or in chat that I want to address. Um, we don't have a good way of ensuring that folks that attend this meeting can ask questions of the TOC. Amy, do you have a preferred mechanism that way we can pull those in and make sure the TOC is addressing them as part of these meetings or asynchronously? Um, huh. I don't know that I do. I mean, like the like there are so many right now. I think if we're talking about like the discussion pieces out there, that I'd rather us focus on at least like two of them ahead of time. Um, so like really just like adding them to the agenda is I think the the most appropriate way to be able to handle this. That we know what what actually is going to be discussed. Okay. Um, given that the uh, public agenda is access controlled, how would you like folks to get them added? I guess at this point, it's basically like, um, uh, flagging it over in like the TOC, uh, Slack channel. Um, yeah, we've not done this very, like, like very effectively. So I'll take, I'll take feedback from like what might make the most sense because yes, the, uh, the agenda is locked. We haven't had a good way to be able to do this. What would make sense? Uh, so there's a couple of no. different options. What are, what are folks interested in? We can have this as a, just post a message in the TOC public channel with what the question is for, um, and Amy can scrape those down. So we, we ensure that they're being covered or at least answering them asynchronously. Um, another option is we can create an issue for the TOC public meetings that folks can comment with questions on, and then we can close it at the end of the meeting. What other suggestions? Vivian giving a plus one for a message in the TOC Slack. See some head nods? Okay, let's try that for right now. Um, Amy, is that something that we could do a quick PR on the TOC repo on the readme just to say if you've got questions for the TOC? Um, drop a message in the TOC public channel so we can ensure they're addressed at public meetings. So I'm actually thinking about like making sure they're over in discussions first so we have a place to be able to like focus um, like and that's where I'm going towards like I want to be able to have them over in and I've got discussions pulled up here and I can drop it over in chat. Um, okay. And it, so like it's a little bit more direct than um, like just just a like a question over in TOC this is something about like if you have something you want to be able to discuss and go through uh like putting it over into discussions 
Okay. It's probably best. Because right now, like the like the questions that are happening over in um the TOC channel over in Slack are really things like, um, where is my project moving around? That's not quite where I want us to go towards. I want us to be able to have like a really just a better conversation. So okay. and yeah, George's and got some pieces in here as well. Yeah, converting discussions into an issue if there's an actionable mm -hmm. follow-up. Okay, so that sounds probably the I'll, I'll put in the PR workflow. for being able to say, here's the work that, like, like discussions for TOC happen over in discussions. Go play over in there, and then we'll see where that goes. Okay. That sounds good. Cool. Matt um, Young, you came in. Yeah. Okay, nothing for Matt. Moving on. Um, so let's see here. Do we want to start with discussions today so we can work through them or do we want to go to pull requests? How does the TOC want to work today? Well, we can certainly start with discussions. Duffy, do you have a preference? I don't. Okay. Um, so let's go through the discussions listing. We'll start at the oldest ones, um, see if we can bring some of these to closure. Um, Josh on November 10th, apologies for the delay in getting to this, uh, CNCF joined a tab. Um, how can we coordinate tab and tags together such that end user feedback reaches tags projects, uh, quickly, would it make sense to recommend tab members join and participate in relevant tags? Um, so let's coordinate. I think we actually have an issue on this or an, an or yet another discussion on this topic. It sounds very familiar to me. What about others? Sorry, can you post the, the discussion link? Because uh, we're not seeing it on, on the screen. So. Yeah, I dropped screen sharing because we weren't like going anywhere with these slides so uh yes give 1204 me i got it right here thank you um, okay well hopefully this screen sharing helps now is this good mm -hmm. you are stuck on a desktop oh even better let me sharing the other one let me see if i can find the right one it might be just not my day for screen sharing and it does not look to be the case ah, here we go give me a second i'll see if i can bring it back oh you've got it perfect okay you got it excellent all right so this is the discussion um i thought we had a toc issue on this for tags and tab feedback i know i tagged ricardo roca on providing a response here and i know that this is on the tabs agenda um so for this one, I think just a summarization of what the expected next steps from the tab are to establish that process once they meet in the new year would be sufficient to close this out. How do others feel? Yep. Yep. So what? Okay. what's the, sorry, question. Uh, what's the follow-up? Is it, is it a meeting or uh, between the tags and, and tab or this is just uh, some document or? I think first off, it's going to be the tab needs to meet and then figure out how they want to do tag engagement. We've already put it on their agenda that this is something that they need to do and they, they've already confirmed awareness of it. So it's really um, probably just timing and waiting on them to get bootstrapped up and running so that they can start figuring out what an engagement with the tags looks like um, and then reach back out. But it might be prudent to put um, a check-in with the tab maybe around April or May once they, they're up and running and have a few months under their belt. Does sounds that answer good. your question? Okay. Yeah, it sounds sounds like we, we just need to put a comment there or something. Okay. Is Public there a comment. TOC member that can take that on to summarize? Actually, I was going to suggest Ricardo because like you're already engaged. Okay. So we, we don't need to limit it down, but. That's true. Um, there we go. Broke out, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. That one is done. So Josh also started this one. This was um, part of kind of the tag talk CubeCon discussion around 
what are the objectives of each tag, um, governing projects, providing documentation and recommendations to adopters on how to use cloud native technologies, best practices associated with it, building awareness um, to enable users of the projects across multiple domains, patterns and standards, and getting feedback and kind of facilitating that back to projects. So these are just a few areas. Um, what do the tags feel and what does the TOC feel? Because I know those are two very dis different perspectives. We might have different expectations than the tags are currently operating on. But part of this is to kind of lay it all out there. What sorts of feedback or opinions do you all have? Or is this something that tag chairs would like to do asynchronously? Just come in here and, and document what it is that each tag wants to pursue. And if there's chat, I cannot read it right now. Ricardo? I feel like we have some of this in the charter of the tags, right? So as a summary, uh, but uh, it sounds like this is more, I mean, in, like a follow-up engagement with the, maybe the tag uh, leads, chairs and tech leads and provide more, more, an up, more of an updated, you know, maybe description of what the what tag is doing yeah. yeah and this was one of the things that we talked about at kubecon is whether or not the current charters and the scope of work that the tags have is sufficient for the work that's being requested of them or the work that they're pursuing just to kind of like level set um and p potentially increase the consistency across tags and those expectations matt um i was gonna say um uh... I've been, Alalita and I have talked about this as well. Um, I can pull up the GitHub issue in the tag observability repo uh, around kind of clarifying and codifying and needing to understand the expectations for a tag co-chair uh, uh, from the TOC and from the tag itself, uh, just as a discussion point. Um, I'll pull up that issue and put it in the chat um, if you'd like. Um, async, but. But okay. so, uh, but 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 I was going to say that as, as context. So, so we've been talking about this topic. I personally think that a good, I don't want to say forcing function, but uh, opportunity to communicate or collaborate um, uh, is would be to have sort of a show and tell, uh, maybe once a year, where all the tag chairs kind of give a lightning talk on what is the tag and why do you care and why might you want to show up and create and contribute and I. I want to say contribute, but oftentimes that, that's an ask for like, hey, come do stuff. It's like, hey, you get to come make stuff, right? Or you get to join us, you know, so some kind of something like that. Maybe maybe around one of the KubeCons, like the maybe KubeCon EU in the spring, right? Flowers are coming up. Uh, everybody can't go to the to North America KubeCon, so they're dialing in and paying attention. That might be a good time to capitalize on eyeballs. And then we'll do a show and tell. So I think the, this this one definitely came out of conversations over in, um, like, sometimes the charters have not been fully updated. Um, yeah. I'm actually going to pass into Rayon to talk about, like, because like, this actually directs, like, his work pretty directly. I think also right. charters, having written one myself, are aspirational. Like, when you're making this group, you don't want to limit it in scope to what I or what, what whomever can personally do, you want to say this is the domain and this 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 is a useful category of of, of thought to 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 coalesce around, uh, you, you you know um and and so so the charters to your point are oftentimes I think really broad and they and they probably they probably should be and they have some like I, I put in the interview we put in the interviewability one you know here are some first activities that are in, are prioritized that might make sense, some of which we still haven't accomplished for resourcing reasons. Um, so like, I'd like to see those lightning talks talk about what the charter is in spirit, what is meant to be the shape of the domain and how it relates to other things and why it's relevant and prescient now, um, right? Like, so present that and then present like, and, he, and here's what we really think is the right thing to do. We could, you know, help want it and oh, by the way, if you are super crazy passionate about this other thing that's in scope, we might have already thought about it and and, 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 and in some cases have. Um, and here's a starting point. Um, the landscape wrap, for example, is basically a tag observability bunch of that stuff. Um, 
So maybe it's maybe a format uh, right there. Well, no, no, I'm going to stop you here because, like, like truly, like we we do actually have someone within CNCF now who's like focus is going to be helping and like bringing out all of the tags. So, um, all right. who's even on the call? Yeah, that, passing to you. That that would be me. Uh, yes. Sorry, <laughs> my 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 video lighting sucks. I moved into a new office, so it's terrible. <laughs> I'll work <laughs> on that. Um, okay. So what I've been doing for the last uh, four weeks is read through tag repos. Um, it is very interesting. It's very disjointed. And many tags have a charter in two or three different places. And they're not the same for one tag. And across tags, it's not the same. And there's a lot of documentation that's very old and outdated, uh, leadership that's not updated. So there's really a lot of work needed for standardization of what is a tag. A lot of the chart is, is as old as the tag and has not been touched. So I think it's, it would be a good time to, to generate a framework of the outline of a tag's charter should contain this information and then step-by-step step go through all the tags and work with them because what i discussed with amy if you go tell the tags your charter is outdated make it better um it's not unfair because they already it's volunteer people already overloaded already a lot of work so we'll have to help them through this process we'll have to choose the low-hanging fruits work with those first and try and work out the outline of a charter and then go do them one by one and assist them in updating and not just throw out more work in their direction that's kind of where i'm going so i'm busy working on a document which i hope would be done properly by end of january saying these are the outline things that we should be doing which also ties in somebody mentioned landscape um one of the things that i also noted across many tags some refer to their landscape some refer to an old version old information um, and then there's an open issue in um, CNCF about how to link landscape to, to tags, to also lighten the work of tags, trying to keep abreast with these are my projects, or rather have a, a link that says, these are my projects, if you click on it, you can see them, and if one that was added last week, it's also there, and nobody have to go do the, well, a lot of automation, and also leadership, keep it in one place, a lot of cleaning up like that, and I'm probably talking too much about cleaning up. Um, I, I would totally agree, uh, but briefly, and also say, bear in mind uh, that many of the tag chairs probably weren't around when those charters were worked on, uh, and they don't, they, they are probably missing some of the why uh, in some cases. So um, I think that 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 sort of format, I think, has, has a lot better better chance of doing good pragmatically than sort of just crack a whip and hey, hey tag chairs go into the redefined, right? Um, because what are, what's going to happen? Everyone will snap to their current resourcing, and and and, and the definitions of our domains sh will shrink. Um, I, it would be the potential if it were just sort of. Maybe that's uh, a good thing. I mean, uh, well, we're, we're kind of experimenting of a little bit. Domain, the definition of what they're doing can shrink, right? But we don't want to like, throw out the baby with the bad. The, uh, that's a terrible analogy. We, you know, I don't want to lose the, the definitions of like what are the 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 discipline from a discipline perspective and then a technical domain perspective what are the boundaries of that that makes oh. sense versus matt today? i'm gonna stop yeah. sorry no no that that's all right and i think it's good because you do touch on a point right like let's take something like tag security just because they're currently focused on these five things doesn't mean that there's these other things in the security realm that are aren't part of the charter and the scope and i'll be honest i do like the idea of you know, revisiting the scope of the tags and documenting it, but adding that context to be clear, because so much of what we do is an insider's club and people put it in thinking everybody gets it. And then you get new people coming in, older people go, you didn't have that nice, clear mentoring along the way. And then context and scope is lost. You ask, why are we doing this? Why are we going in this direction? Why is it open this way? And there's no context there. And maybe there wasn't any to begin with, and it was just throwing stuff at a wall. And that's useful to know, too, to say, we threw these out there as initial ideas, and somebody in the future needs to come back and revisit this, right? Now we're in that future, it needs to be revisited. So I think it's a useful exercise to do this for the tags, to look at that, and to document what we can. Um, 
just for that contact sharing. Yep. I appreciate that. And I, I want to touch on briefly that I don't think it's necessarily around um, altering the discipline. I think it's more of understanding how the discipline has changed or shifted. Um, I like, I'm thinking back since we've been talking about security, security 20 years ago is not what security has been in the last five years alone, let alone 10. So it, it certainly as a field of study has shifted dynamically. And I could probably say the same for most of the other technical focus areas that we currently have defined by tags within the CNCF. But there is, as we've seen in the past year alone with AI, there is a number of other areas of interest and skill set and alignment that has some overlap with what we currently have, but not necessarily in all cases. And I think it's important that we continuously kind of reevaluate or reassess if what we currently have is what's working for us for the next year, two years, three years, five years. Um, and we rely on our tag leadership and our tag communities to help inform and guide us along that uh, respective uh, domain. Um, so this conversation is still open. I would encourage all of the tag chairs and their members to kind of chime in here um, and understand a little bit potentially around what it is that they're looking for out of the tag. What is the work that they're currently pursuing? What things are they not getting traction on? Like I know in the tag security charter, there is at least one third area that doesn't get a lot of visibility or discussion. And it's usually around uh, enabling auditors to be able to reason around the components of cloud native systems and technologies. And that's just not something that we as an industry have really focused on. All right, so next discussion point also from Josh. Uh, in the same vein of updates from Kubernetes SIGs, it would be nice to provide an update from CNCF tags about new and updated projects as part of their as part of the KubeCon keynotes. Um, I know that this is something, um, the KubeCon keynote portion, I know is something that Nikita has been kind of strategizing around with the events team. So I'm gonna leave that with the KubeCon co-chairs to potentially resolve. We do have some communication path there. Um, Having a TOC member as a co-chair is always a nice perk. Um, but relatedly, each tag should hold a project meeting at KubeCon and bring together sandbox projects for awareness and discussions. So for this discussion item, I would recommend that if there are tag chairs that have strong opinions about this, to put them here. And then we can share that with the CNCF events team and see if there's potentially opportunities for them to uh, provide those resources to tags. How do others feel? And Amy, does that sound like the right path for this one? Yes, and George has some good ideas about how to be able to improve like the just kind of overall experience for tags and projects here. Um, uh, and I'll wait for him to come off mute unless he is stuck. Oh, here he comes. All right. Yep, I, I'm still catching up. One second, I'm still reading this one. But yes, in general. Yeah, they they we had like keynotes at KubeCon talking about tags, but I think this is maybe expanding on on that a little bit. But yeah, so it sounds good. Nikita's already working on it. So. And the and the KubeCon co chairs. Mm -hmm. Um, for this one, would it be beneficial to request the tags um provide perspective and opinion here by like let's say February, so before KubeCon? Um, so that we can make sure that the events team has that going into North America later on in the year. I was going to say, I'm like, February is a little late for being able to get like things together for Paris. Happy to be able to see options for like how we want to be able to do this for North America and happy to be able to see like what people think is missing. Um, and, and a Jan might be better. So. Yeah, I, I know we're working on this somewhere because one of the feedback we have was that the, uh, the lunch tables seem to be a hit with the tags and we definitely want to like start growing from there to get them a little bit more. Tables are like the last thing we could do for for Chicago. But I attended a few and it seemed like a lot of people were engaged. I don't know how others others of you felt. Um I think the lunch tables overall like 
I would describe them as a mild success. Um, we did have a few folks that stopped by and seemed gen genuinely interested, but the difficulty in finding the locate the tables and then finding seating for everybody at the tables. Yeah. I know in some cases we carried conversations from that meeting to the table, which made it difficult for potential contributors to kind of chime in and understand the context of the discussion. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, but yes, feedback in the issue. We'll keep an eye on this one. If we can do it, yes. If we can't do it for like this one, North America. Yep. yep, yep. Okay. Um, Check-ins with tags as part of the sandbox annual review. And Ricardo, um, you kind of had a comment about this as well in chat earlier. Uh, which one? Uh, oh, uh, it, like th this kind of relates back in towards like the tag health check, but maybe like yeah. that that's a step too far. Um, yeah, I mean, my comment was related to the mm -hmm. charters, you know, the how how we do the communication about the, what the tax are doing at a specific moment. But yeah, my yeah, and and yeah, one comment about that is just that we're as as tags. I think we should think about being at the forefront of defining what cloud native is, right? So. And that's part of like keeping the charter up today, right? So we like some of this stuff is hasn't been created yet. And I, I think as a goal for tax and the CNCF and the TOC is just to be at the forefront of of defining things, right? And and what what people are gonna be using also with you know, two years down the road, for example, right? two or three years down the road. Yep, I agree. Um so since this one is largely going to be driven by those charter updates and deltas for the kind of where the tags are headed and the work that they're going to do, I think getting the charter discussion underway um, needs to happen first. And then we can kind of explore not just sandbox, but also incubating and graduation re-engagement with some of these projects. So beyond just the ones that are very early stage and experimental, largely looking also at the ones that are on their way to a higher higher level of maturity and production readiness. Okay. Um, were there any other thoughts on that one before I jump to the next one? This one is likely to be a little spicy um, and it's a long one. So I'm going to try to summar it, summarize this. Um, and this kind of came out of the Project Moving Levels Task Force as a point of discussion. And it was one that um, we couldn't reach consensus on with a single solution because it warranted larger uh, tag and community engagement. But the current criteria um, for graduation requires that the project maintainers are from at least two organizations to demonstrate survivability. Um, that kind of falls into two different categories. Uh, openness, meaning that the maintainership of their project has a distribution of accountability for their decision making so that no single entity is responsible for the entirety of the direction of a project. It's consensus based or it's collaborative. The intent is that there is a structure that allows voices to be heard and for the community around a project or the leadership of a project to make a decision that doesn't necessarily favor one organization or the other. It's in the best interest of the project to move forward. The other side of that is sustainability. And this one we've had a significant amount of discussion on um, and that the if the primary contributing organization were to dissolve, detach itself from the project, be acquired, disappear, those maintainers move on, what is the likelihood that the project itself can sustain its momentum in moving forward or even kind of limp by until it gets that momentum back? But ultimately, if a company were to disappear, that was the primary driving force behind a project. Will the project continue? This is especially important as projects reach graduation and we're encouraging adopters to leverage in them leverage them within their infrastructure. We don't want them to become a single point of failure for an entire enterprise when the main uh, maintainers disappear because the project um, 
has just lost that that level of momentum. So there there's some kind of discussion points here. Um, I don't know that it's worthwhile to get into a lengthy discussion here, but I want to make sure that folks are aware of this and that they have the opportunity to read through it and express kind of some of their opinions. Um, we're hopeful that the end user technical advisory board will provide insights here, but from the tags perspective, um, I'm sure as you all have engaged with sandbox projects or in incubating and graduated projects, if they are checking back in, you have some understanding and, and around the different models around maintainership and meeting this requirement. And I know tag contributor strategy definitely has opinions here. Is, are any of them on the call? I don't believe so. Okay. That's fine. Oh, actually, yeah, no, I don't think anybody's here from them. Sorry. Mm. Does anybody have any quick thoughts on this or is this one of those definitely async, <laughs> Ricardo? Yeah, the only thing um, about graduate projects, having a single organization as the maintainer uh, can, I mean, a project can be in graduate stage, even if that's the case, when you have a lot of end users supporting it, right? So in a lot of end users are aware of that um, because maybe a lot of end users say like if that maintainer uh, is not able to maintain the project anymore that uh, and say okay we, we're going to step in and maintain the project right so or, or, or we're going to have at that point they're fine with a single maintainer but maybe later on they're aware of you know maybe that maintain, maintainer not being available anymore. And then can just say, okay, we're ready to step in and maintain the project, right? So that's the only ex exception that I see, right? Um, so the, the, that's something to keep in mind, right, I think. So it sounds like more of a risk decision for the adopter to be mindful and aware that there is there could potentially be a single organization behind a project. Right, right, right. And because it could be like a very mature project, right? It could be like, you know, being used by a lot of end users and, and running in production, but it just happens to have a single maintainer, right? So, it's true. Hey, okay, Matt Farina, then Matt Young. So, I, I've got a lot of thoughts on this, and I'm only going to share two right now. Uh, the first is, you know, I want to agree with Ricardo that this is a risk decision, but it's also one of those things where if you've got one maintainer who's working on it and then they go away, it's incredibly hard for other people to pick it up and run with it because that context is missing. And so from a business decision, it may look, oh, it's easy. We'll have these other people do it. But from a practical maintainer engineering perspective, usually when you have one maintainer on it, knowledge is kept in your head. When it's one company, knowledge is kept in your organization. That means that transition to the outside because things really aren't as open becomes really, really difficult to do. And it's hard for those other people to pick it up and effectively lead it forward when they're not part of that discussion and you don't have that culture to begin with. So I think just saying that this is okay actually ends up bringing risk in that people don't realize is often there at that decision maker level. So it's better to have multiple organizations up front because that forces this context to be in the open. The second thing is, um, I think that this is an important discussion for us to have right now because uh, contributors to CNCF projects is a risk. If you go to um, things like the landscape, the new landscape V2, and you go to the contributions, you go to dev stats, what you're actually going to see is the overall contributors across the CNCF are down, even though the number of projects we have has gone up. And we're kind of shifting from a phase where you had the crazy creators going up, and building all the new things, and you've got the long-term sustainable maintainers who need to be involved. It's a different context, different scope, different set of people. Many of the creators are running off creating new things, a lot of them in the AI space. But these things that are now foundational for us need the long-term maintainers. And we need to invest in building that up. And that is probably one of the next big challenges for the TOC. And the two org requirement kind of highlights part of that. Because if you can't get maintainers in the first place, how do you get the two org maintainers? How do you fill this space? How, how do you make this work? And this may be part end users. This may be some vendors who uh, build on top of it. But really, I think solving for it is part of that larger context of we need to get maintainers in who aren't those same creators we had before. They're the long-term maintainers. And what does that mean? 
All right, that's my two cents. But I do think this is one of the pivotal things to deal with. Those are great points, Matt. Um, I'll just briefly say, I think we have um, a precedent and a concrete example of a, a complementary way to achieve the same ends that the, I think that the two org requirement attempts to, what would it aims to do. And that is uh, when Linker D um, uh, was really maintained just by Boyan. Uh, and, you know, Boyan being at the time a small company still is, uh, and it could be acquired, right? Um, that happens all the time. Uh, so in order to prevent an acquisition from potentially tanking the project if it's not understood by, right? Um, uh, they created a buoyant consumer advisory board. At the time, I was an end user, actually. Um, <clears throat> and so they had approached it as well. I didn't have that time to participate, but I was running Linkerd in production, right? And so the idea was to provide somebody like that, um, that, that could provide that context and something that would live on um, outside the context of an actual corporate organization, even if one organization was primarily hiring actively, you know, the, the maintainers for a particular project, but they wanted to mitigate that. And, and so, so to provide something workable that also provided like a forum where end users could show and tell their success. And, you know, it, it means just, I, I think, I think there's a good example there that you could talk to William Morgan about. Uh, and he might have, now that it's a couple years old for you, I think he might have some, um, you might have some feedback on what's going on and what hasn't, but in any event, I, I think it's a it, it's an approach that could also work in a, in concert with this. Yeah, I I don't disagree, but I I want to provide a quick caveat and and then I'll turn it over to Ricardo Roca. Um, well, having some form of governing body can address. Um, some of the concerns, there is still the fact that there are individuals with administrative access to these repositories. And as much as I believe in good humans doing good work, Don't mean there's, uh, not. there's right, still a risk for attacking those maintainer accounts that have administrative privileges. And we need to ensure that there is um, some form of kind of dual ownership in those administrative rights. Ricardo Roca and then Ricardo Aravena. Yeah, so I actually had a more of a question because um, there was a project um, uh, considering applying for graduation where they wouldn't meet the to work maintainer requirements today. And to fix that, because finding a vendor for the project and a different vendor would be harder, they were actually engaging with end users to come forward and become maintainers as well. Um, I don't think we have any thoughts on differentiating maintainers if they come from vendors or end users, right? They're, we just consider them the same. Uh, but I guess the risks are different, right? We, we can imagine that an end user changing a project is harder than a company backing and making money out of a project moving somewhere else. Is this something that makes sense to consider? Or uh, I don't know, I was just wondering when they asked. For. That's a good question. I don't know that we have any strong opinions one way or another yet. Yeah, like, is there, is, does it make sense to like describe this as a criteria? That we measure like with temperature right like where we say like taking into account these variables this is the risk assessment for the project as it relates to um as it relates to the overall risk assessment for developers or for the for the development of the project right because there are multi it's definitely like a multiple input kind of thing it's not Yeah, I, I was also thinking it, it really depends on the case, like you said, Duffy, because like if we consider a large organization betting on something like Argo uh, to to manage all their platforms, they will probably be very interested in making sure the project stays and investing in adding maintainers. But if it's a company where the project maybe isn't that critical, but they still got someone as a maintainer, probably this maintaining moving to do something else is quite easy and replacing not uh, priority. It's actually very, 
it's also very likely that if you're an organization, say you're like, you know, a big organization that's using an open source project and that open source project goes on life support. If you plan to continue it, it doesn't mean that you're going to do that in open source. Right. It means that's also very true. You just fork it into the local patches and that's it. Ricardo Ravina, you have a hand. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of history around this uh, with the Nats project. So I think we can actually revisit this uh, from three or four years ago. And, and I think they've been trying to graduate, but then Synadia or Synadia is the only organization as a maintainer. So we might be able to revisit that. I think they've been trying to graduate and we're trying to come up with something. I'm not really sure this of what the state is with Nats, if they've actually found more maintainers, but you know, something that we can take a look at. Okay. Um, so still a lot of things yet to figure out. Um, TOC, is there any additional information that would be beneficial for us to um, arrive at better clarity on this existing criteria and how it's been interpreted? Um, I think right now the recommendation from the Moving Levels Task Force is really to break these into two separate criteria. Um, so that they can be addressed uniquely um, in the course of evaluating projects and their governance structure? Yes, we need to have the discussion not clear on what additional information we need to have. We just need to kind of talk through it. Okay. There's probably a lot of this that we could that we could actually gather from the work that we're doing around um, auto automating things about like understanding the health of projects. Like, mm -hmm. agreed. Okay, so let's go back over here. We're gonna switch topics again. We got eight minutes left. Um. I think I want to touch the uh, uh, the TOC tag follow up. How can we support each other? The shag share vocabulary. It looks like we've got two of those together. Um, yeah. And, and Matt, because you're on the call, like I wanted to kind of focus on like those first. Um, because yeah, like they they look they look very similar. similar. Yeah. So, yeah, I took this one to tag contributor strategy um last week, um and we talked about this and some other stuff too. Um, this one. Um, uh. Yeah, uh, and but it was only in passing, and it was at the very tail end of their um, uh, their, their meeting. Uh, we actually talked about other stuff first, but uh, what this was was you know ads. We expect working groups to bridge tags, as we expect tag leadership to roll over. Um, kind of consistent with what we were talking about before. You know, with a shared vocabulary, even if imperfect, um, facilitates that. And I want to be clear that I don't. I'm not, I'm not asking that we all adopt this as like the one true religious way to think about things, but it does define some nouns that are somewhat uncontroversial. Uh, I would like to say that um, Josh Berkus raised a very valid point in tag contributor strategy, as well as what we talked at KubeCon um, around some of the labels used in the actual book, like toys, um, that they could be perceived as pejorative. Uh, that, 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 that notwithstanding, um, I, I think the monarchists should probably change the book made choices. Uh, uh, but I think the definitions of them are, 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 are at least a useful place to start a discussion that doesn't demand, you know, start from zero. Uh, and and I'm, in, I'm in the process of, um, you know, Landscape Craft is a working branch there uh, from, from KubeCon that I've been hacking on uh, so that actually looks at the landscape uh, and, and, and tries to apply these just to see where things quadrant out. Um, yeah, I think this sounds good to me. I mean, the the terms don't need to be defined. Uh, they, they can be changed, basically. It's not the, I, we can work on the definitions, right? So, Some some folks in the community might have a 
So yeah, so I have I, a I problem with, with some of the specific terms, right? But like, you know, in the end, we want to also think about the definitions, and we can change those terms, right, to accommodate uh, the specific the specific pro the terms to, related to the projects and and the CNCF. Yes, I, I also want to make sure I, I reiterate Josh's Josh Perkis's, um point that kind of if you, what that distills down to when we talk about the meeting is is what the tag contributor strategy they're working on with the maturity model uh, is complementary to what I'm proposing or suggesting for discussion here because it's qualitative in its assessment. I'm actually looking for something that we can augment that qualitative assessment if it's quantitative based on behavior and activity of the project. Right? Is it a bunch of people? Is it just two people? Is it growing or shrinking, you know, as it calmed down and is that okay? <laughs> you know, like the, the, that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, are there outstanding security patches like these? The ability to build up some kind of index relies on just a, a nomenclature as a starting point, so. But what I'm hearing, it sounds like there's there's more than just these kinds of terms that are introduced here, um, particularly on this discussion, we've also talked about domains, verticals, and workloads as potential definition areas. So it sounds like in the context of cloud native, we need to, we have the cloud native glossary, which kind of touches on a lot of these, but we've not actually gone through and, and expanded that to a more specific CNCF glossary in the context of tag and TOC operations and what it is that we're doing. And that might be beneficial here. Seeing some head nods. Um, so is this something that's worthwhile to pursue resolution on soon or later, or let's get the project moving levels recommendations confirmed and finalized, and then we can revisit this at that point in time? Just thinking about like workload of the TOC and all of the ash that we've placed on the tags recently. I think I like the idea of being able to engage with the glossary folks and being able to expand that um, and having that be kind of a spring conversation, like April-ish as we get through project moving levels. Okay. Allie? Allie. Um, yeah, so I'll just paste something in the chat. So in time contribute strategy, we created a glossary but um that you can find in the chat but that doesn't categorize projects or that doesn't discuss um some some things like uh what were those things like passive users active users those kind of things but we have some stuff so uh this could be another um uh, destination for these kind of terms Yep, that sounds good. Thank you for sharing the link, Ali. I think this would be a good opportunity to to uh, leverage the cloud native glossary and providing some of these definitions and expanding it more. Um, I know the TOC maintains the definition of an adopter, for instance, on our repository. Um, so it would also be beneficial to understand where some of these definitions are going to be kept moving forward since we do have the glossary having that centrally linked out um, wherever it's referenced would be beneficial. All right, so we got two minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I do have some comments I still need to make on those discussions. Is there well, one minute left? Um, any other last seconds from anyone? No? OK. Um, I believe this is the last meeting of the year. Uh, Ricardo, go ahead. Yeah, when uh, I thought something that I thought of uh, when looking at these discussions and Somebody mentioned that for action items, we can actually create tickets. We can also make use of roadmaps on on GitHub, right? So, so I think for timelines, right? So we can track these. Like, we, for example, we're going to take a look at this after April or maybe after June, right? So that I think I think it's good to visualize. So we can make use of that. Awesome. I appreciate the feedback. I'm still learning about roadmaps and how they work on GitHub. So that'll be a fun and interesting project to figure out. Yeah, it's sort of like a project management tool, right? So you can you can actually have your items and, nice. and yeah, yeah. set a timeline, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we're at time. So this is the last one of these for the calendar year. 
Um, thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate it. Um, I wish you all the very happiest of holidays and a wonderful new year. Please do try to take some time off from open source while you're either working or spending time with your friends and family over the holidays. All right. Thanks everyone for a wonderful year. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.